going to do a little syntax lesson today for all y'all out there. If you want any information on who I am or what it is that I do, you're more than welcome to check out my TikTok channel or my YouTube channel, the links to which would be in my bio on either channel. Now you can check out some videos and things like that. I'm just going to get right into it. As you can see here, uh, looking at a web page here, I'm going to be syntaxing a passage from Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy 22, uh, chapter 22, verse 29 to be exact. And this ties into the last TikTok live stream I did with the God and Grammar, but I decided to sort of ease off of that particular topic and just talk about the grammar, but use it still within the context of uh, religion and, and all that. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I've taken this passage, Deuteronomy. So I've taken this passage, Deuteronomy, chapter uh, 22, verse 29, and I have copy and pasted it into a document. As you can see here. And it says, if a man comes upon a virgin who is not engaged, and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are discovered, the party who lay with her shall pay the girl's father fifty silver, and shall she shall be his wife. Because he has violated her, he can never have the right to divorce her. So this is from the Torah, okay? This is from the first five books of the Bible, the Abrahamic religion, the bedrock that Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are built upon. And as a lot of my Christian uh, acquaintances would say, you know, they believe all of it. I mean, it is, you either believe all of it or you believe none of it. So this is the word of, of that, uh, that God, according to their belief system. So this is the story of uh, what happens if a man finds a virgin who is not engaged and rapes her. Nothing's going to happen. But if they're discovered, then the guy has to pay uh, the victim's father 50 shekels of silver and then marry her and can never ever divorce her. That's the word of the, the Abrahamic Hebrew God. So there you go. So let's take a look at it. What is it actually saying? Well, I think it's pretty darn obvious <laughs> what it's actually saying. But it is a fictitious conveyance of grammar, as is the rest of the Bible, the Torah, whatever pieces of the book that you believe comprise the Bible, it's all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. It starts with a non-tangible contract word, and it ends with a non-tangible contract word. And what I mean by non-tangible contract is that I don't have a tangible contract with what a her is. It could be anybody, especially in this day and age. If it, there would actually be a name there, like Mary, M-A-R-Y, like a female name, now I have a tangible contract with what a Mary is, but a her, I don't. Just the same with him, it, I, he, she, they, those types of things, everyone, everything, those are non-tangible contract because they're vague. 
They're vague conditions of state. There's no tangibility to them. They're not even based upon facts. Because in the uh, plain English fiction uh, lexicon, they're categorized as pronouns. But that's not necessarily what they are here. But what I'm saying is they're not facts. They're not nouns. They're categorized as pronouns. P-R-O means no. N-O means no. U-N means no. Just like in noun, N-O means no. U-N means no. So a noun is a no-no and a pronoun is a no-no-no. So that's the first step in syntaxing. You credential whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. Because going backwards when you're doing this is the most efficient and effective way for a beginner to do this. If you're not a beginner, you can start anywhere in syntax. It just may take a little bit longer, but this is the most efficient way that I know of to do it. So if we're looking at divorce, then in that context of tangibility and non-tangibility, that's definitely tangible. TO is non-tangible. Right. The. Have. So let's start syntaxing. Her is going to be a pronoun, which is being colored by tangible contract, adjective divorce. And you can see down here, this is your syntax key. One is adverb, two is verb, three is adjective, four is pronoun. Two is going to be an adverb in the future tense. Uh, as you can see here, nine is future tense. So it's a 1.9. Right is a verb. The is an adverb. Have is a verb. Never is an adverb. Can is a verb. He is an adverb. So you have a 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4 scenario. There are five syntax patterns, which I've gone over in other videos. You have your 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 4, 1, 3, 4. And again, you can look those up in other videos that I have. So he, let's go forward here, and uh, I'll explain it to you going forward. He is an adverb condition of state which is modifying can into a verb. Never is an adverb condition of state modifying have into a verb condition of state. Verbs can only exist in the fiction if they are being modified by adverbs. And in the is an adverb condition of state modifying right into a verb to is a future tense adverbial condition of state, which is modifying divorce into an adjective, which is coloring her into a pronoun. So you can see the modif modification here. The adverbs are modifiers, and the adjectives are modifiers. So ones and threes are modifiers. Therefore, Sentences would never end on a 1 or a 3 because there's nothing left to modify. So through process of elimination, you can actually syntax if you learn the, the rules of syntaxing, which are available on my YouTube channel and, you know, in part on this TikTok channel. But the complete set can be found on my YouTube channel if you take the time to study it. Okay, so to get back to it, we have her, which we already know is non-tangible contract. Violated is tangible contract, so we have the same scenario that we had here, where you have a 3-4. This is also going to be a 3-4, although this is going to be a 3.8 past tense. As you can see down here, 8 is past tense, so violated is 
past tense has would be an adjective, he, adverb, and because is going to be a pronoun. So you have a 4134, which is another one of the five syntax scenarios that I have mentioned. I think now would be a good time to go through and do some parse as well. We'll add parse into this lesson. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight uh, the particles of negation. Some of the particles of negation, not all of them. Because if you were to highlight all of them, there would be a lot of highlights. For example, any word that has a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning is no contract. But I'm just going to hit all the obvious ones. So, oh, why is that doing that? As we said, violated. ED is past tense, so therefore, there's no contract. BE in this context is no, so the BE and B cause is no contract because it means no cause. Another ED here, and a DIS, those both mean no. Another ED, now we can go a little further and we'll point out the no contract tense words like two is future tense shall is future tense what else another shall right there okay so there like i said there are more but i'm i'm just going to do the the obvious ones. Like obviously, never and not are particles of negation. They are literally particles of negation. They are negative conditions of state. So let's get back to syntaxing. So we have wife which is tangible contract, and that's going to be a verb, because his is non-tangible contract, and that's an adjective. I'm sorry, it's an adverb. And then we have a pronoun. Shall would be an adjective in the future tense. She is an adverb because it's non-tangible contract. As I told you, it's the same basic categorization as her, it's she, and is going to be a pronoun. Now, some people might, with a little bit of experience, might say, well, wait, isn't and a conjunction? Well, yes, if it's used as a conjunction, but here it is not used as a conjunction because it's preceded by a break in the continuance of the evidence, which is a comma. So it might as well look like that. You see what I'm saying? And is not connecting anything with anything. And if you know what an, uh, a conjunction is, you know it's a neutral condition of state that is a bridge between what's on this side of it, you know, what's on the starboard side and what's on the port side. In this case, there is nothing on the port side. There is nothing to the left of it except for a break in the continuance of the evidence. Therefore, and is not performing the function of a conjunction. It's performing the function of an adver uh, a pronoun. And again, another rule you can put in your back pocket is nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, which would look like this, or an adverb. You see the same situation here, where B and his, that's a pronoun, and then an adverb. Now, 
Modification runs one way. It runs from left to right, from port side to starboard side. It does not run backwards. This adverb is not modifying this into a pronoun. A pronoun is not a modifier, and it's not modifying this into an adverb. It's just a simple condition of state going by the rules of these, the syntax, which was put down by the publisher of Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parsi Syntax Grammar in 1988, colon David Ivan Wynn, colon Miller. So we have this, as we mentioned, breaking the continuance of the evidence. We have silver. Now, let, let's start uh, here. Okay, so we have a non-tangible contract word, tangible contract word, tangible, tangible, and tangible. We have brackets. Now, I'm going to show you something. This, this can get a little tricky here. And this is something you can use in... Only the most discerning eye will know. Okay, first I will do it incorrectly, and then I will do it correctly. Most people would probably syntax this like this. The would be an adverb, girls is an adjective, father is adjective, 50 adjective, and then silver would be adjective. Let's separate this for a minute so we can focus in on this. There we go. Matter of fact, this is not correct. Does anybody out there know why it's not correct, syntax-wise? Anybody have any idea why that is not correct? Any guesses? Think about the four corner rule, the rule of boxing. You can look that up in Black's Law Dictionary to get an idea of what I mean. Think about that rule. And also think about what a break in the continuance of the evidence, what that means. And that will lead you toward the closure of what I'm trying to convey here. Anybody in the chat have any guess? Is there even anyone in the chat? Wow, no. No, there isn't. Or at least no one actively in the chat. Okay. I guess that's to be expected. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you the answer. Let me put it back together. There we go. All right. So as you can see here, let's get rid of the, okay. You have the word 50. And then you have a space. And then you have a bracket. And then you have shekels of. And then you have a bracket. And then you have a space. And then you have silver. So if what is in brackets from the beginning of the bracket to the, to the, to, from the port side bracket to the starboard side bracket, if that is not to be considered, then what do you have? Starting with the, we have the, space girls, space father, space 50, then we have space, space, silver. So there are two spaces in between 50 and silver when you take the brackets out of consideration. Even with the brackets in consideration, there's still two spaces there. So that's excessive spa spacing. It's a break in the continuance of the evidence in this context because every word is being single spaced until you come here where it's not. So that is why silver would be syntaxed as a standalone pronoun, 50 would be syntaxed as a pronoun, 
not an adjective, a pronoun, and then father would be an adjective, girls would be an adjective, and then the would be the adverb. So it's a one, three, three, four, and then four. One, three, three, four, and then four because of this double spacing between the Y and the bracket and the bracket and the S. That's a little nuance that not too many people are attuned to. So the next step is to go to the word pay, which of course is tangible contract. Shall, by the way, is tangible contract. And the way you can credential that is by looking it up in an etymology dictionary. So you can see it comes from, give some old English as a uh, Roots of it coming from the word can. So, again, comes from this preterite present verb along with can, may, and will. Old Norse to owe, be under obligation. So, anyways, the point of this guilt, debt, guilt, uh, owe. Those things are all tangible contract scenarios. So therefore, that's why shall would be tangible contract. Now, in contrast, let's look up the word the, for example. The is one of the most obvious non-tangible contract words. When you see a word that tries to give closure or meaning or value to itself by using other non-tangible contract words like this, that, so on and so forth, the, it just, it's like a, it's like circular logic. Then you, that is a red, one of the red flags that the word is going to be non-tangible contract. So that's a good rule of thumb to follow. So under those auspices, shall is tangible contract and therefore would be syntaxed as a tangible contract word. That means pay is going to be a pronoun. Shall is going to be an adjective in the future tense. Her is going to be an adverb with is a pronoun, lay, adjective, who, it's going to be an adverb, falls under the same rule of his, her, it, he, she, they, everyone, who, whom, those are all non-tangible, the party, that's pretty easy, party's a verb, the adverb, discovered, would be a pronoun in the past tense because of the ed. R is tangible contract adjective. They, adverb, and then of course and is not performing its conjunction function, and so it's a pronoun. With her, verb, adverb, oh, here's a good conjunction one. So he seizes her and lies is not engaged. Okay, so let's start from the non-tangible not. Engaged, not engaged, and he seizes her and lies with her. Her is non -tangible. Okay, so it looks like lies is going to be a pronoun and is a conjunction, so we'll give that a zero. Her is a pronoun. Seizes is an adjective, he is an adverb, and is a conjunction. Not engaged would be a, engaged would be a 2.8, and not is an adverb. Now the reason there is a 1, 2, 0, 1, 3, 4, 0, 4, is because in the fiction, 
when you see a conjunction, a conjunction can connect or be a bridge between ones, twos, threes, fours, or any of the five syntax scenarios. So in this context, it's a bridge between pronouns. It's a bridge between fours. And then in this scenario, it's a bridge between a one, two and a one, three, four. So that's how that works. So we have is, it's a verb, who is an adverb, virgin is a verb, a is an adverb, upon would be pronoun, comes would be adjective, man, adjective, a adverb, and then if is a pronoun. If I were to syntax 22 colon 29, I would syntax that as a pronoun because there's no closure as to what it is. I'll put it in parentheses so that you can differentiate the syntax value from the number because it is a bunch of numbers. But in the context of this, they're just hieroglyphs like these. And then Deuteronomy Ronomy would be a standalone pronoun as well. So there you go. There's your little syntax lesson. Now I'm going to switch gears real quick and go into something else, go into flag protocols. Because you can also perform forensics and syntax, syntax, so to speak, um, things like flags. So I'd like you to check out what's being said here, and then I'm going to show you something. Anything else on flag that we can think about right now, Dave? Anytime you put a spire, if the eagle's wings are up, like on the dollar bill, it's a postal authority. If the wings are down, it's a phoenix under Vatican banking. So if you can't read the text there, it says, Russell uses a spire finale on his flag, thus negating the correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar contract. He's at war with the people, according to David Wim Miller. The spire would be military court-martial, the ball would be advertising, and the acorn would be for parades. However, anything you put on top of the flag, including a can of Coke or Pepsi, cancels the flag itself. Anything put on top of the flag cancels the flag itself. Now, friends and neighbors, I draw your attention to this document, which is from the Last Flag Standing website of Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould. You can see here Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould. He autographed over the stamp. He is postmaster of this document. So, therefore, look, anything on top of a flag negates the flag. There's a spire there. There's a spire there. It's martial law flag. This is not a correct sentence structure flag. This is a martial law flag. Okay? This is the flag that he uses. I just wanted to point that out to all you individuals out there who may be curious or involved with this man or with his people or his anything that he authorizes this is what you're getting involved with it's not correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar it's martial law and besides if you look at the grammar here you see this tilde zero this number has not been positioned there is no position lodial phrase in front of it because in correct sentence structure, 
In order to position facts with correctness, you must use a position loadial phrase, for the, of the, with the, or by the. Otherwise, it's not a fact. And to say, well, it's a number, it's automatically a fact. What are you asking your reader to do? You're asking them to assume. There is no assumption presumption. It might not be a number. It might be an O, the letter O. You don't know what it is. But if you position it with the position loadial fact or a colon, now you know, oh, it's a fact. Okay, I got it. And look, though, there's a space between the zero and the four. There's no period there. There's no dash. So it's just a standalone pronoun. And actually, it's not even a pronoun. Because if you take in consideration that this document has obviously been left and right justified, so you see those huge gaps and spaces is explained by that left and right justification. Now, zero in this context is going to be an adjective, which is coloring for, F-O-R, into a pronoun. And then we have the adverb the, an incorporation case number. All of this that is underlined would be a verb. Actually, not even a verb. It would be an adjective because of would be a pronoun and then this would be an adverb and so on and so forth on down the line. Because if you take the mechanics of the bottom line, whatever is being bottom lined is to be taken as a whole. So you would syntax, no matter how many words appear in that underline, is to be taken as one entity. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. That would just be <laughs> ridiculous. But that's just a little bit of it. You know, it's the grammar is not correct. And I've just proven that. Incorrect positionals, like in as a positional, what is the opposite of in? Out. There are four positionals, for, of, with, and by. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. What is in congruent with? Out. So how would that be read? Backwards, it, it wouldn't be. But the main point of all this is was to show you the the flag there that he's using and to hear what David Wynn Miller had to say about it with Russell standing there listening the advertising and the acorn would be for parades however anything you put on top of the flag including a can of coke or Pepsi cancels the flag itself Anything put on top of the flag cancels the flag itself. So this flag is canceled. And Russell was standing right there. So, there you go. Dever XX... BWJ says, so we've been in martial law for how long? Well, I think we've been in varying degrees of martial law for a very long time. Um, if you take the simple concept of licenses, if you read what, um, what is the name of it? The, the Lieber Code and things like that. Um, the hallmarks of varying degrees of martial law are licenses and permits. That you have to have a license to be able to operate a motor vehicle. What is a license? A license is a permit you pay for to do something that would otherwise be illegal. So in the context of the fiction system, if you don't have a license and you're driving, you're doing something illegal. But if they give you that card, now it's legal. Suddenly, you can do it. It's okay. So that's the hallmark of martial law. I think we've been in varying, de varying degrees of martial law for at least 100 years. At least. Can't say for sure. But yes, varying degrees. My point in saying that about uh, 
Russell is that he's using a martial law flag. So whatever he's doing over there with his construct with the Syntax Learning Center and the last flag standing and all that stuff, it's under the uh, martial law. That's his volition to bring martial law because he uses the spire on top of his flag. I've been in courts where they have yellow fringe flags that have the eagles with the wings up, the eagles with the wings down, with the ball on top of it, and the spire. Usually if you go into a Secretary of State office, you will find, nine times out of ten, the topper on the flag will be a spear in the Secretary of State's office. I've never walked into one that didn't have the spire on top of it. Post offices have usually have the ball on top. They used to have the eagle with the wings up, which is postal or presidential, but now they have the, the ball. So I hope you enjoyed this little broadcast with this syntax lesson that I gave you at the front end of it, and then the uh, little lesson on flag protocol at the back end of it. And I hope you come back. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you share it. Uh, tell your friends about it. This one and especially YouTube. I'd appreciate it if you're here on TikTok. Go over to my YouTube and subscribe to that channel as well. If you, if you find this knowledge valuable and you think others should hear about it. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Listening to what I have to say. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.